and welcome back to another video. So I don't know how long this video is going to be because this is a way we'll be taking a look at the redstone add-on. And this is basically like an expansion to redstone. So this could be a shorter video or this could be a longer video. I don't know. I don't even know if this is going to be going out today. So uh, if there wasn't a video yesterday, now you know why. Because this uh, might take way too long. Oh, finally! Another one of these books. God, it's been so, it's been a while since I've actually, since I was actually used one of these books because they just keep using an empty book all the time that's like got small text and it's difficult to read. Ah, fine. Anyway, welcome to the register now. Don't read about the new blocks. Awake it in the tutorial. Ha. Read about how the new blocks work in the tutorial section or change certain settings about them in the customization. So tutorial. So, we have a, oh, we have a fair few items to go through here. So, first up is the Redstone Station. The Redstone Station is a special crafting station where all new blocks are crafted. How does it work? Apart from only being used for certain recipes, it works like a crafting table. Block specification to learn its crafting recipe, you need to find Redstone. Uh, so if I just put in red stone, so, yeah. oh, I'm going to go craft, crafting table, game mode zero, place that down, there is redstone station, so it's, one redstone dust, two uh, uh, four iron ingots, a crafting table, and uh, three smooth stone slabs. Actually, I'll probably need that later. So, uh, so we have the redstone station. We place it here on. And this will allow us to craft all of these. So next up in the book is the conveyor. Uh, place the conveyors in a track and they will run automatically. Build slopes and turns by placing them at different heights and angles. Block specification connect it to item teleporters, item filters, breeders, and the feed into hoppers place below. Uh, so yeah, conveyor belt, here it is. Two leather, a nine ingot, and a, and two chains. So let's see, Con conveyor. So we place it down like that, and it goes like that. Ah. Oh. How do you, I guess that would work? Yeah, that works. So you throw items on here, and it takes, it's actually really quick, you know, transporting the items. Then if I get a hop, if I get a hopper, there's a new hopper in here. Yay. So, if I put the hopper there, will it pick them up? Yeah. So you can have this going along your, like, item filters for your storage area, and the hoppers will automatically pick them up. That's, that's actually really useful. Uh, I like, that is actually quite cool. Uh, I do like that. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, let's go, well, let's go on to the next one because this, so tutorial. Next up is item teleporter. When connected to conveyors, uh, they will teleport items that uh, follow it, that uh, flow into them from an input to an output teleporter. Activate them to switch in between input and output. Uh, can be marked with dye, only matching colors connect. So that's really cool. So that was the, uh, let's go to game mode zero. 
That was the tele... The uh, item teleporter. It's a conveyor belt, uh, five iron ingots, redstone torch, obsidian and eye of ender. So we got the item teleporter. So we place one down here. Like, oh, and then one down here. Place some, oh, and I, uh, and I forgot to share, so hold on. So I assume you can do this, yeah. So they're basically like rails. I want to see items go up it. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, uh, oh yeah. So, oh wait, no, they're both on input. I want that to be on. Yeah, ah, there we go. So, that there, right click to make it output. Then we throw some redstone dust in here, and it gets sent over there. That's really, that's cool. It even makes a cool little noise. And if we get some dye, it's to die for. So let's get cyan dye, and let's get some purple dye. So let's make that site, so yeah, you right click to make it say. Ah, yeah, so there you can see that's now cyan. So they're black by default by the looks of it. So let's go over here. And you can probably, like, ha yeah, and that there, so you could. And then that there. That there. Make that one purple. Make that one purple. Make that one cyan. So yeah, you can see that, uh, yeah, they work perfectly fine. That's really cool. So what you do, uh, do with this is if you have, if you have uh, uh, items you want to get to a specific place, but say there's a building or something in between it, uh, you just basically paste a couple of these uh, and it, uh, you teleport the items over. Um, this is a bit more of a niche product uh, item because there's not it's not too often you do need one of these. We'd also just use it to uh, save on the resources, not having to craft a bunch of conveyor belts and just having a couple of these to teleport them hither and tither. But yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah. So, on to the next item. Uh, tutorial. So, you got uh, item filter. Uh, pressing the button on its backside will switch it to only accept items from the chest instead. So boss back button left input right output front output so accept reject so let's get this so how do you craft this it um, filter so it's a scaffolding of four iron ingots a hopper and a conveyor belt. So get this so uh, let's just grab these uh, these because I think I'll use these to uh, help test so the button on the back so that button back <clears throat> yeah that button back there the book says the button on this backside will switch it to only accept items from a chest. So, 
If I put, if I get a chest, I put, say I put the chest here. Oh, are you having a spooky dream? Oh, she's having a spooky dream. Oh, poor Baba Boo. So right now they're not going in, but then if I right click the button, No. Yeah. Hmm. What about up here? No. Hmm. Let's double check the tutorial item filter. Back to button left is input, right output, and so except we just so maybe. Also, you don't need to right click the back of it to press the button, apparently. Um, how do you set the item filter, though? Hmm. Yes, that got rejected. How do you set the item? It doesn't tell you how to set the item filter. Uh, not, uh, uh, not customization tutorial. Item filter. On the back, so except only from chest instead. Button. Right, so while I was making the uh, thumbnail, I noticed that they sh that they showed off the uh, sorter in the thumbnail, and they uh, and they had the chest on top, and they had an emerald on, it, and they saw it like so. so basically, uh, you put the item in the chest, items in this chest that you want to continue on going this way, and then the items that, that uh, and then if they're not in that chest, they go off to the side. Now I would chain I would flip those around because if you're making a uh, I if you're making like a uh, sorting system, you'd want the item. So basically, you'd have uh, you'd basically have like a row of these, and uh, you'd have the chest on top, and uh, you'd have the items in that chest that you want to go off to the side, and basically, uh, and then the ones that are that are went you know going off to the side would go onto the next item filter. But basically, what with this, you'd have basically have it so that you'd have to have it so like uh, you basically it would basically this basically this how this set layout makes it uh, more hold on makes it a bit more of a pain in the butt if you're doing a sorting system. So they should uh, swap them. Also, I've got. Check out. There is set uh, customization. So you've got the fan, no ignored entities, conveyor, no ignored entities, entity teleport, and it spikes. So yeah, no, it's you can't change that. So being hold on, so what if I press that button? Ah, so yeah, pressing that button swaps okay, so yeah, no, so that's good. So yeah, pressing that button swaps it around. So basically uh, so right now the diamonds are going there, but if I press that button, if you press it, then it goes to the other side. So yeah, at the, yeah, that's fine. Just be be aware that's what the button does. Uh, so I would recommend uh, not having the button pressed because then the you know the items would go off that way. You'd send them into like hopper that would go into your into that chest for that those items, and then you know they keep going. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, hope, uh, hope this helped you. Bye-bye. Yeah, it doesn't tell you how to set the item filter, so maybe I'll come back to this a bit later and maybe it'll tell me something more about it a bit later. But that's confusing. So, tutorial. Custom repeater. One tick and is 60 seconds and 60 seconds. So simple redstone device, need a, a repeater to read the output. Uh, make sure to place a second repeater after the output repeater to 
stabilize so it's still signal and prevent any glitches so it's it's doing repeater uh hold on, I've been custom repeater here we go how do you craft this real quick you did it there's a redstone repeater, iron ingot, to two smooth stone slabs, and two gold ingots. So, in seconds, in ticks. So, delay. So, you can have a delay up to 60 seconds or 60 ticks. Let's have this be delayed by uh, 15. Oh, 15. 15 seconds. Go to key mode one. And get a boot on. I feel like that it's been more than 15 seconds. Oh, there we go. Oh. oh, there we go. Yeah, so I'm guessing. So yeah, that didn't do. So yeah, you need a repeater going into it to make sure it does uh, get it. I guess. Or maybe you could just do redstone dust. Put dust there, button there. Yep, yeah, redstone dust works as well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Can uh, use that instead of like hopper clock. Well, not really instead of hopper clock, sorry. Uh, but you can you you can basically you uh, compact a bunch of repeaters into one uh, one of them basically, uh, which will like make it easier to compact a, a larger redstone uh, redstone machinery. Next up we have the redstone counter. Output a signal after a customizable number of input signals. How does it work? Activate the redstone counter to open its settings and set the number of inputs it needs before it receives a signal. Before it sends a signal, sorry. Uh, simple redstone device needs a repeater to, sta to stabilize the output. Uh, to place a second repeater after the output would be... Oh, remember to place a second repeater after the... Don't know why you need this. Okay. So... Let's get the game at zero. Count. So we have the redstone counter. It's two iron ingots, a redstone repeater, and three smooth stone slabs. So, that there, that there, so count to 10, so let's say I have a red stone lamp here, and I grab a hopper, and the chest. And you that needs to get back and let's grab a comparator. Uh, 
the comparator there, chest there, hopper there, hopper there. I know. So let's put ten die in there. I know that didn't count because it was all going in at one, so it only sent one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's got ten. Yeah, that should have worked. One, is it? Tutorial, counter, oh, do I need a repeater there, going into it, and then one of them, and then that. One, two, yeah, three. Four. Yeah, that's just going to do that. So, let's keep going. Boom, boom, boom. One more. Oh, that one more. There we go. It's send up, sent out a signal. So yeah, this is, this could actually be quite useful. Uh, hold on. I'll be right, I'll be back in one minute. I want to show specifically how this could be useful. Okay. So I'm in my redstone world and in a live stream, in a Dagtopia live stream, I designed this, uh, kelp smelting, uh, machine. Uh, to efficiently smelt uh, uh, kelp. And if you see here, to uh, I have a comparator here. So all these hoppers are locked. And uh, when there's 23 kelp in here, it'll send 20 kelp in. Uh, so, uh, because that's the most efficient way, because of the whole uh, block, how the, how the kelp blocks smelt it. But if I get a count... A counter and a rep repeater. I just need a counter. Oh, I'd also need a comparator. Comparator, uh, repeater. Uh, I uh, but you'd have I'd have to move all this back, but uh, just destroy that for now. This is a copy of the world, so I'm not too worried about destroying stuff. Um, so I've got the comparator, repeater, and you get the counter, and you might want another repeater there. Uh, and then you'd have the T flip flop there, and basically you, I, you'd set this to twenty. Actually, you'd set that to twenty. If there we go, you'd set it to twenty. You'd have it go into the T flip flop, and 
then, you know, you'd have that go, and then when the red steel man gets sent there, you'd uh, get an observer to turn the T flip flop back off, and uh, yeah, and then that uh, would uh, uh, basically make it so that, uh, uh, you know, that would basically replace the system I had before with the comparator and the, 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 and the chest. But yeah, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, that's, that could be useful. And it would definitely have say it's more efficient than uh, the way I did it because it technically it started at, tw at 23, so it could be a little bit finicky with the amounts that went in. And it was a bit of a pain in the butt to figure out, but yeah. Uh, pretty useful. Let's move on to the next thing. Tutorial. So, Redstone Randomizer. Every time it receives an input signal... Oh wait, there we go. Sends a Redstone signal in a random direction. How does it work? Work. It will choose randomly from one of the three possible directions to send a signal every time it receives an input signal. A, a simple redstone device needs a repeater to read the output. Make sure the second repeater after to stabilize it. So, uh, and redstone randomizer. Golding it, ironing it, two smooth stone slabs, and two redstone dust. So this is a lot easier to explain how it's going to be useful. Uh, basically, so let's get the randomizer here. So I think this is the input. Uh, I do not have a button on me, but, yeah, button, yeah, sent it out to there, yeah. so yeah, it picks randomly between the three different directions, so what you do, so what you do here, right, if you want a, want someone to have a one in three, if you want a one in three chance of or something happening, you get, you basically just do that and send that to where you want it to go. But then if you wanted a one in three, I'm pretty sure that's nine. So that's, then that'd be a one in nine. And then that would be one in one, two, three. Actually, you can't really do that. Because then they don't like cross over. But then, yeah, but yeah, you could basically just like, Keep doing this and uh, if it, uh, and have like a bunch of different that uh, like uh, things happen at random. Uh, and it's a lot better and it's a lot easier to do, better to do this than something else because like, um, the only other way I tr know of like getting a truly random thing is like getting a chicken into a box, having some pressure plates on the floor and uh, having the chicken. Uh, and then when the chickens walked over one of the pressure plates, it would uh, do something. But this is a lot more simple than that, than that because he just wire this up. So with this, uh, there's uh, uh, you, you have like twelve different possibilities of what could happen. And if you want to change, so basic, so you, uh, what you basically have is something like this. Uh, well, oh. You have a dropper, a comparator, and a repeater. So you'd have a comparator there, a dropper here, hopper there. So, ba so basically, you'd have an item there. And it would, ah, so that's a bit of a problem. So it's set, 
So even when it's constantly powered, it only sends out a single pulse. Unless... Yeah, no, it only sends out a single pulse. Now... Yeah. It, only, it will only ever send out a single pulse. So that uh, should be changed. This should be changed so that if it's being constantly powered and it constantly sends out a signal, uh, but this could still work, it just be a little bit more annoying. So basically what you'd have is you'd have this dropper here, so you, so when you want to re-randomize it, you'd power this hopper, it would put the item in the drop, in the, you'd power the dropper, it would put the item in the hopper, uh, turning this off, and then the hopper would put it back in the dropper, turning it back on, re-randomizing it. Uh, and then you just have to like set, uh, put like, a clock uh, hooked up to it. Uh, and then you, I guess what you'd have to do is you'd have to take the output from these, uh, from one of, from these, and just, and then like take that to where you want it. So, so you'd have you'd have another you'd have to have another T flip flop, which is annoying. So you'd have to have another dropper here, another hopper, with another item in it, and then you have to take an output from there with a repeater. Wait, no, that wouldn't work. You'd have to, uh, how would you do that? Yeah, no, that's not a T-flip flop, flop, sorry. So for that to work, you'd have to have that there, that there, that there, and then that there. Item in there, so when it got powered, the item will go into there, and then when it got powered again... Oh no, did I...? Ah, I can't remember how to make this. But basically, you dab a T flip flop. I can't remember exactly how to make it off the top of my head right now for some reason, but then you take the output from the T flip flop, and you put it, take it there. But then you'd have to have some way of deactivating the T flip flop, so you'd have... I guess you'd have to also, like, hook up the uh timer from here to like each one of these to then hit there well no then now we'll turn them on yeah no this really needs to just be sent in the constant now but for it to be really useful because then you because it just makes it so much more complicated uh if it's not constantly sending out a redstone signal So while that can be useful, it's a it just a bit more complicated than it really needs to be because it just doesn't send out a constant redstone signal. Like I said, if it sent out a constant redstone signal, you could it would just be way simpler and uh, easier to do. In a tutorial. Uh, randomizer, so wireless redstone. Send long distance redstone signal to match colors. How does it work? A uh, transmitter will send a wireless signal to a receiver, activating, activate to switch uh, between them. Uh, can be marked with dye, only matching colors will send. So, yeah. So let's take a look at this. Why? Uh... Oh, wait, try. Oh, no, I'm trying to find it. Remote control? No, it's not that, I don't think. Controller. Oh yeah, wireless redstone right there. So there's a redstone dust, ender pearl, and two 
iron ingots. Anyway, I just misspelled for wireless. I threw up the die. Alright, so we have that there. So. Yeah, there you go. And then flip this around. And then you pr uh, press that button. Oh, I need to set this to receive. There we go. Uh, do you need a repeater coming out of it? Oh, God damn, I flew right into the where I said I just flew out. Right that there. Yeah, there we go, that works. So now if I get a another one here, a dust button. Another one here, oh, wrong way round, set it to receive, uh, redstone repeater, and then, oh no, why did I, that, 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 that. Yeah, you can see, works perfectly fine. Yeah, so again, this uh, could be useful if you just need to get a redstone signal somewhere, but there's something in between uh, where you want to where you want to where you're taking the signal from and where you want to send it to. Same with any like, item teleporter is just, uh, and it could also be used to, like save on resources if you if you uh, save like a uh, on redstone dust. It's a little bit more expensive than needing it. Well, I think they both needed it in the pill. Yeah. Anyway. Let's move on to the next thing. So, wireless redstone. Next up is the redstone display. Uh, display the redstone signal strength of it of its strongest input. How it gets powered like a block so it can detect inputs from any direction. Simple redstone design. I'm struggling to see how this. So yeah, redstone display, four iron ingots, four smooth stone slabs, and a block of redstone. Display. Oh, me. So yeah, right now, it's zero. Now it's 15. Now it's 11. And if I put that there and I wait. Oh, and if I do that there. Yeah, that's 12. That was 14, yeah. So, yeah, and it only shows the... I'm struggling to see how this is useful, though. Like, at what point do you really need to see the redstone strength of it and, like, which one is strongest? Like, why? I mean, I guess it could be like... 
Uh, I don't, I honestly don't know why you won that. Maybe you can think of a reason and put it down in the comment section below. And if you can, I'll pin that comment. But I don't really think that's useful, like, at all. Midstone Looper. Sounds of a still signal that take of vehicle tick interval. How does it work? Activate the looper to send it to the intervals. Set the interval speed between one and five ticks. Simple words to need, need repeater output. So I think this is going to be the most useful one. Loop. So yeah, redstone looper, clock, and you get two smooth stone slabs and two redstone doors. Uh, Lupa. Anyway. Right, so yeah. Two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, you crouch and you right click. Yeah, you right click on the, the number. And it slows it down, and boom, boom. Okay, so it only sends an output from uh, the top repeater. Um. So yeah, basically this is a clock, and it's set to five, so I don't know how long of an interval this is, so I'm going to time it real quick, so at five, uh, hold on, let's get a stop, watch, a clock, here we go, so, uh, Right. That's about three set two three seconds. Yeah, well I got two point nine nine, so I'm guessing it's about three seconds. Uh for that and I have a couple of complaints. Like this could be super useful. Uh but it's got some limitations. So firstly, um I don't know why it's like say on the face like that when other things like uh, wasn't so like this uh, I could with the counter I can set the number like that but with, and there was the other thing like I don't know where it was but the, yeah this one the custom repeater that I could delay up to like one minute now with but with this you can only like set a two, like a three second counter, max. Uh, I really feel like this could uh, be a lot better. So, um, basically like make it so that uh, you can custom set a uh, different uh, amount of times so where it counts to because uh, then, Because then uh, it'll be much more useful. So, like, um, going back to that kelp smelter, in the uh, Danktopia uh, live stream series that I do, uh, I built a giant kelp farm, and uh, I need it, and uh, I, I need to replace the hopper clock that I put in because of reasons, but uh, if, you're, if you're if you interested about that, you can see the series. There's, there's a playlist on the channel. Um... But basically, uh, I could like this would be good for that uh, uh, if I could set the time way longer because I like I don't really know of any point where you need a five like a just like a two a three second count like a, a redstone pulse every three seconds because that's just like way too it's way too quick to for like most things. Or way too slow for other things. Like what? What would what it could be useful for is setting it to one, and using that instead of like two observers facing each other. I guess because I guess this would be a bit cheaper if you. 
don't want to go to the nether. I don't know, but... Yeah, so basically, I would change it so that when you right-clicked it, it get it gave you a bunch of, like, different times. So it gave you, like, uh, a few seconds, a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, and, like, thirty minutes, and an hour. Uh, and it would send, like, a signal out to, in those intervals. Uh, because, like, yeah, that would... That would be really useful then, because then you won't have to bother with, like, hopper clocks and stuff. But right now, that's not really good enough to really warrant using it over a hopper clock. It's just... Or just two observers facing each other sometimes, or just, like, whatever. Just too niche, really. I mean, you could use it, but it's not something like most people are going to be using in... Their redstone builds, and it and if they just changed it so that to, it had a greater range of time, then a lot it would be a lot more useful. Entity entity sensor. Uh, sends a redstone signal if it detects nearby entities. Uh, activate to configure with each entity and in a way is sure. Can also search for player names instead. What's in, okay. So what what was it called again? The entity detector. The entity sensor. And uh, entity sensor. Two iron, two gold, redstone dust, smooth stone slab. So if I put this down, so when it when there's an entity on it, it sends out a redstone signal. It makes a cool noise. Now this is pretty much pointless. Right, uh, you can set filter, which is, which isn't super useful. Yeah, there, and there is a lot of entities you can set. But it's, unless you're like using it for players. Uh, name of entity, ghost, pkm, master, submit. Yeah. So unless you're li li doing it to like trap a certain player, or just make it so that the door only opens for us. Okay, so this, yeah, actually I have thought of a single use for it. If you ha if you want to make a redstone door, and you want to make it so only uh, players or only you can open it, you can use this for that. But there's a, but there's a reason why I say that other than that is pretty much pointless, and that is because if you just get an observer, one observer, and a single piece of string you can basically achieve the exact same thing just without the filters hmm. yeah so as you can see when I when I step over it, it sends out a redstone signal, and when I step off it, it sends out another one. Now, you could say that if you don't want two redstone pulses, then this would be good, but if you don't want two redstone pulses, you just add a repeater on max delay. See? The repeater only makes it to a sing send out a single pulse. So, yeah, this is basically pointless. Even then, if you're, if they're not, well, you can say, oh, if they're not moving that quickly, then that won't work. Okay, that, that, that. Wham, bam, wham, boom. Done. So when I step on it, it'll lock the 
Hmm. Yeah, no, that still sends our red, our two red spin signals. Yeah, so I guess if they if you're like moving them slow, moving the entity slowly could be good, but it's like it's, it's just way too niche for me to really say. Oh, that's a good item. Uh. What they could, I don't know what they could, uh, maybe they could like make it uh, so that you could make it invisible or, or like hide it somehow, but because so then it would be better of like traps and stuff. And there would be a legit, then there'd be a legitimate way to use it over the just an observer with a piece of string in front of it. But yeah, other than that, I don't really think there's much to it. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next thing tutorial. Randomizer, wireless redstone, redstone display, redstone looper, entities, uh, rain sensor. Uh, so yeah, this will just be like simply placing on the sensor. It's sick, but it's a single so. Let's see how you craft this. Rain. Rain sensor, iron trap door, redstone torch, two smooth stone slabs. Now this is another very niche product uh, item. Because like, when do you specifically need to like uh, detect when it's raining? Like, weather rain. Like, yeah. Well, like, at what point do you need to like detect if it's specifically raining? I don't know. I mean, again, if you can think of a legitimate use for it, uh, uh, put it down in the comment section below, because I'm not an all-knowing bee. Maybe there is a legitimate use, but it seems very pointless to me. The spike. Uh, here's mobs. Any mobs that touch it will constantly take damage. Mobs that die from this damage will drop XP. Does not hit player. Oh, well, that's pointless. So. Spike. See, so you have spike. There's also lava spikes. It's free stone swords and smooth stone slabs. So get spikes. Looks kind of cool, and then if we just like uh, some vin, why? You know that it's some peaceful. Uh, game will do mob spawning faults. If add some in the vindicator in, yeah, they fall on top of it and they bounce off. So yeah, it's not right. So it's a bit pointless there. Like any game is quite good because it's quite it's cheap and uh, if you don't have loot, if you don't have a uh, uh, because trident killers, the, these aren't as good in Minecraft Bedrock because trident killers exist. But trident killers are more expensive because you need a you need a trident, preferably with impaling, uh, and you need like pistons and observers, which you need to go to the Nether, which means you need diamonds. So it could be good the early to mid game, uh, if before you go to the Nether, actually. Mid game is the never is pretty much the mid game, uh. So yeah, it could be a good early game when you can't when you get, don't have like trading killers, but I don't know. And also, it doesn't apply looting like trading killers do.
And I don't know why it doesn't hit players, because... Uh, it, then it would, if it, they should hit players, is what I'm trying to say, because that would then give them a legitimate use over a trident killer, because trident killers can't hit players, because the, players, the player is just going to pick up the trident. So, uh, if they could hit players, then it would give them a little bit of use because the player would not, would have to like break him or something. I assume you can just like hop out to them like this. This and just get like a chest or something. <laughs> yeah, there you go, and the items go into here. Yep. Yeah. So, also, I would change this up a little bit, so make there be multiple, more tiers of spikes. So there'd be like stone spikes, and iron spikes, and gold spikes, and diamond spikes, and each would do uh, more and more damage, and they'd use the three swords of each. So uh, stone spikes would use like uh, three stone swords, and like three stone, and like three stone slabs, and then... Uh, uh, iron would use three iron, three iron swords instead, and then gold would use three gold swords instead. They could do as much that, and you could also have wooden ones, and, you, and they did do as much damage as the swords. The wooden spikes would do four, stone would do five, iron would do six, uh, gold would be the same as stone, so I guess no point in having gold swords, gold spikes. And then diamond would do seven and could have netherite for like eight. If you really want to make netherite spikes. And there are some niche, uh, there are some uses for this. So like uh, when you're building a raid farm, you uh, you need to basically make a uh, like far, uh, pillager captain spawn a farm like at, uh, at a... Uh, at a uh, pillager outpost, uh, but you could just you don't need the looting for that. You just because they will always drop an ominous potion bottle, so you just have, you could just have uh, for some of these instead of a trident killer, and that would save you on some resources. Well, ultimately, once you get once you can just like build trident killers, which aren't super difficult to build, then they they become obsolete. Tutorial, lava spikes, uh, hits mobs and makes them drop XP and cooks cooks their meat. Uh, and more about that, so yeah, they're basically just like spikes, but lava. Yeah, three stone swords, two smooth slabs, and the lava bucket. Uh, and the again, these are basically pointless because you know swords are looting. You could just say kill them with your swords, and they have fire aspects to automatically kill them. But yeah, it. There we thing. So I could kill. But like I could just like kill them with a looting free diamond uh, sword with flame on it. 
instantly and they get more cooked meat and more leather. So I don't really know why you use that over just a sword. Ah. Uh, I guess it's cheap. Again, I guess it's a bit cheaper. XP tank. Uh, stores XP points that does awake. Uh, sneak and interact with the XP tank to deposit or withdraw XP. Interact with a filled tank to quickly withdraw 500 XP. Will automatically collect XP from mobs killed by spikes if pl placed directly underneath. So if you don't want to collect the items and instead you want to collect... So that's... Mm, on XP, yeah, XP tank. Uh, let's see how you craft this. <coughs> Six iron ingots and two glass. So instead of having the hoppers underneath them, you could just yeah, have an XP bank. So do you need an XP bank underneath each of them, or do you just need one underneath one of them? Yeah, you need an XP bank underneath each. So you'd, so you'd have to do that. And then instead of getting the items that you get to store there, yeah, no, this is just not good. Like, why on earth would you choose to collect the XP but not the items in a mod farm? When most of the time you want the items and not the XP? Uh, what it should do is instead of just collecting XP that's a dropped from uh, mobs that are killed by spikes, is just basically be like a skull catalyst and just like absorb the XP if a mob dies within a radius around it. That way it's actually useful. Well, it, nah, it could be useful if you want to store your XP uh, and the. Uh, in case you die, so you don't lose all your levels, but come on, it's just why? Why would you make it so that you basically have to uh, uh, use them instead of collecting the items of hoppers? That's that's just not a good decision. Uh, the sensor spike, flower spike, XP tag, entity teleporter. Uh, teleport mobs in place between teleporters. How does an entity that steps on it will be teleported to another teleporter? That's the same. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I think this is simple enough to understand. Entity teleporter, iron trap door, two iron ingots, two obsidian, a diamond, and an eye of ender. So, yeah, entity teleporter here. Let's see how far this goes. Entity teleporter there. Okay, why is this not working? Need to be marked with that. Ah, they need to be marked with die to function. Okay. Okay. 
Yep. What happens if it is three of the same? Yeah, if it's three of the same, same thing, it kind of breaks. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, no, it does kind of break, isn't it? Well, it doesn't break, it just sends you to one at random. So right now there's a 50-50 chance of me going to that one or the one all the way over, over there. Hmm. Seems to be that. Here we go. So what I want to do is test out if it can take you through dimensions because I've not tested out with anything else yet. And if I want to see, so let's make that purple. So set block and. Boom. Purple. Yeah, you can teleport through dimensions. That's cool. Okay, yeah, so you can, and I assume you can also do it with these, like item teleporters as well. Uh, so yeah, if you need to send entities or items through dimensions, that's how you do it. So I assume then the chunks don't need to be loaded for them to work because, uh, when that, when I was in the end, these chunks were, wouldn't have been loaded and the end chunks right now are not loaded because you only load the chunks in your current dimension. So if I go here, huh. And now it's, oh no, there we go, it just lagged. Just lagged for a second then, I guess. Oh. But yeah, so that means the chunks don't need to be loaded, which makes these uh, really useful, like, uh, moving mobs around, so... Especially, like, villagers. If you need to move villagers around, this will be really helpful. All you need to do is, like, set one up and then have, like, a water stream push them off it. So I have a button on that block and then water stream going along there. Or just or signs or whatever. Anyway, on to the next item. A breeder automatically makes applicable mobs breed of each other. While an appropriate breeding animal is stored it stored in a breeding item is stored in a chest or on the breeder's uh, backside. Breedable mobs that step into the input are temporarily stored. If another mob of the same species enters a breeding item, are uh, consumed and the baby of that species is sent out the front output, while both mobs are sent out to the right output. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more complicated. So, game mode zero. So to craft this, need a four iron, redstone torch, a furnace for some reason, two smooth stone slabs and a conveyor belt. So, let's see, so we put this here. So, uh, back chest, left input, right output, baby mob. So, back is the chest. On chest. Got a chest, so I think this is the chest. So if I put some re worth a 
some wheat in here. Cow. So yeah, cow go in there. And then we put another cow. Yeah, so they, they get spit out here and then the baby gets spit out there. So what you'd want to do is get some fence. Actually, well, you could, yeah. So what I would do is I basically just have that there. Then I could do, you can do that there. Then do that, and then you'd have. So that's where the ah, that, the baby got out that way. That's not great. So, mm. so the animals can walk through that. Now, what would happen if I just put that? Well. Yeah, no, they went in and spit that out. Okay. So, actually, I think that would work. Then I put that there. If I put that... Kill at E. Put that there. Then that would spit out the adults. There, which I want to get them there. And then there, get some fencing. And then with the babies, you just want a little hen there. Then you just put some cows in there. Hold on. Why is... Why is it gone and done that? They're spinning around. That one comes out there, that one comes out there, that one comes out there. Yeah, why is... Why did the baby not... Why did the baby not go out the right one? One. Oh, two. Yeah, the baby went out the right way that time. Weird. Yeah, so you basically just do that and they, they just keep on getting bread. You just spam a few in there and just go around. It's not working quite right. Yeah, they're like pushing each other. Yeah, that's not very. That doesn't work very well. I don't know. It seems they. It seems like they just they just overcomplicated this. Like, why couldn't they just make it so that it was a block? You place down a block, and it uh, the highlights is, uh, when you place it down, it highlights an area. I don't know, like maybe like a sixteen by sixteen area or a ten by ten area or whatever. Then like, uh, full like fully grown like breedable mobs in there. They to get. They get bread, and then the baby they make it would teleport that to the back side, uh, to where. So hold on, let me get a p a piece like ancient debris or something, just like any random block. So imagine, imagine instead of that this the breeder being this, it was like a block like this. You place it down so on the, this, so say on this side, you know you had an area Uh, an area like this, actually, yeah, 
And then maybe like this. And if there was uh, And if there were two and if there was two breedable mobs in here. So yeah, I didn't I don't have the spawn eggs anymore. But yeah, basically you get the idea. If you know there's two if there are two breedable mobs, you know, two fully grown breedable mobs in here, they make the baby. And then the bait, then it would suck the baby and spit it out the back. And then you could have like another holding cell back here for the babies. And like uh, you could have, and then you could still have like the, have it like, and then what you could do is like you have it, have it like take items, uh, take the breeding stuff out the top of the top of it, maybe. Then, then you can have like the wall go back to there. I just think the way they've done it is just overly complicated and not super functional. Right, uh, tutorial. Uh, breed a bucket reef. I'm not going to highlight this one because I'm just going to show you something real quick. Dispenser. Book. Bucket. Water bucket. Observer. Uh, get some glass, get a hopper. Now I'll go back. Right then there. That there. Dispenser there. And just put them in there. Oh, come on. That there, that there. Okay, you do need an infinite water source. And probably some way to actually get the water out. Somehow I did manage. Anyway. Yeah, somehow I did manage to get a second water source, though. How is it dispensing empty bucket? Uh, I don't know how you... Hold on. Book. We'll pull more stacks. There you go. All the water buckets you'll ever need.
And I don't know why you want an auto water bucket for I mean... I'm not exactly sure why, but apparently you're something people want. But yeah, it's not very impossible to do in vanilla, and it's just like... Well, let's. Uh, I'll. I, I will like show it off. Hold on, I need to empty out my inventory because it's full of shit. Full of buckets now. Uh, tutorial. Buckets refiller. Takes empty buckets from a chest above it and tries to fill them with something in front of it. It's a gray, grated input, then it drops the filled bucket into a chest below it, activating it, it will switch it to refuse filling water so that aquatic mobs can be taken e- What? That last part makes absolutely no sense. Refuse taking- filling water? What? Say that the what? The fuck are they on about? If you use taking water to make cash in what? Uh, well, your game is here, man. Fuck. Book a tree filler. Uh, four hop iron ingots, iron trapdoor hopper, and two smooth spoon slabs. I mean, one upside of this is I could use it with lava, I guess. Set block. Set block. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Uh, Portal. Good game mode. Game mode. Spectator. Why is it in there? Lava lakes? There we go. Lava lake. Zero. I don't know why I did zero. I need to be in creative. Right, so. If I put that there. I get some chest. I don't like it being... And get some buckets. And it's not working. Well, is it working now? Don't think so. Nope. Tutorial. 
Okay, we fell off. Nothing can fall. Oh, Philly was sunk in front of his. Gr oh. Well, you're going to need uh, fire resistance inspiration for this. There we go. And there's no better than a dispenser. Pointless. Jeez. All right. What? It, all right. How they should change? They should change this so that it does like a big area. So it's like, oh, within this area in front of me, there's this much lava. So I'm gonna soak up that much lava. That way, it's it's at least better than a dispenser. A good year. So yeah, basically just a really expensive dispenser. Yeah, uh, block this. Okay, so block dispenser. Oh, this could be good. Uh, how it takes blocks from the chest above it and place them in front of it when they're given a redstone signal. Continuously places blocks while powered by redstone. So, let's go to game and zero. See what it takes to craft this. Block. There's four smooth stone slabs, redstone dust, iron ingot to make the block dispenser. So you put the block dispenser there, get a chest. And let's get a button, U-turn, and a lever. Let's get just like a stack of blocks, I guess. So if I power it, yeah, place the block. Can't place a block if uh, there's already a block there. And if you hold a lever, then yeah, and if you're constantly powering it, then it's uh, constantly going to be placing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can, uh, there's definitely a bunch of stuff you can do to, uh, that you can use this for. Uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. But I remember a bit back, uh, you used to be able to place this, uh, command blocks with dispensers. Now, Mojang removed that feature because it was, uh, caused a few problems. But let me just check. Uh, let me give. At p com command block. So I do like give at p diamond. Uh, impulse unconditional, always active, and I control pick. So there, that works. So control pick blocked. I put it in here, it placed the command, ah, okay, so that's going to be a downside to this, so when it places a command a command block, it deletes the NP, NBT data, and I bet that's not the only NBT data it'll uh, delete, so if I just get some so some well yeah it, well actually it doesn't really matter what I put in here so anything can be put in there. I just do control pick block. 
We have Chesro NP NBT data placed. The NB yeah. So NBT data gets deleted. I don't know if this is something that they can fix or not. I'm not entirely sure. Again, I don't make add-ons, uh, but I'm probably gonna say that I don't think they can. Uh And it, well, they don't say that it's that uh, well, the bug doesn't mention this, so that they should mention that in the book. But if they could make it work with NBT data, then uh, math makers could do some really cool stuff with being able to dispense command blocks. Next up is the redstone saw. Destroys the trees and drops their items. How does it work? When powered by uh, redstone, the, the saw will spin and destroy logs placed in front of it. Will also destroy other logs directly above the destroyed log, allowing it to cut entire trees. So, ha let's go see how you craft this redstone saw. Three iron ingots and the redstone dust. Now, I think it would be cool if they used a redstone dust and a, a uh, stone cutter. So also, it already looks like a stone cutter, so might as well say so you could use say, a stone cutter and just like put like an iron ingot. A red, like redstone dust and like a couple of iron ingots found it. Yeah. Uh, so it places facing you. Uh, let me get a lever. Place lever. So if I get a log. Yeah, so it breaks logs. Ah, so it does chain them together. Hold on, I wanna... Lily. I wanna... Lily! Get some oak leaves. So, let's just... Put a few of these here and there. If we and then place that there. Yeah. So it is a bit limited. So you can't uh, use this to break big messy trees. It also doesn't break leaves. But this is pretty good. Like if uh, if you have a tree farm. And instead of put, putting the output of the tree farm into a cube maker, you just send it into the chainsaw, then that'll uh, cut the trees down automatically, and you just need a hopper to collect, make sure you collect all the logs. So it's good. Could Would be cool if it uh, could handle messy trees, but it's not a deal breaker, really. But yeah, on to the next thing then. Uh, breathe, blah, 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 blah. Uh, redstone drill. Destroy any blocks and drop the items if possible. When powered by redstone, the drill will spin and destroy blocks placed in front of it. If it breaks an ore, it will also break any connected ore blocks. It can be upgraded to spin faster and drop more ore by feeding it to enchanted box with with efficiency or fortune. Oh, well, that's cool. So, what do you need? So, hold on. EFF. Efficiency 5 and fortune 3. Drill. So it's four obsidian, redstone dust, and that, two iron ingots. 
Not super expensive. So I'm going to need another lever. I don't want to keep throwing them away. So you have this there. Oh, can you feed the... Uh, tree cutter with uh, the efficiency. No. Nope. Would be cool. Uh, feeding them the efficiency box to make them work faster is a cool idea. They should implement it more. So. No. Give at P mob. So if I place down the mob spawner, yeah, it's not gonna. Uh, yeah, so it just gives you XP because it can't be picked up normally. If I put, say, some diamond or there. Wait a second, yeah, there we go, it broke the diamond ore. And I right click it. Efficiency 5, Fortune 3. Yeah, that works. Now you could use this in like a uh, stone generator. Hold on, something else I want to check. Can you add silk? touch to it. No. Right, so you should be able to add silk touch to these because then you could make a cool uh, automatic stone farm. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What, what else could you use this for? You could you use, use it to get cobblestone automatically, but they should add it so you could use silk touch and get stone. Uh, you could use this in, or well, basically anything that, where you need to like, have a block broken, basically. But, can these be moved by a piston? If I get a piston, and, well, no, let's get a sticky piston. And a red, red stone block, and the slime. So, I don't know how to make a uh, flying machine off the top of my head. But if I put that there, that there, that there, that there. And that there. Yeah. It works. It works. So, yeah. You could make a uh, tunnel ball with this. Drilling. Now they to automatically drill through stuff without having to use TNT. That's pretty cool. All you need is a simple roll uh, flying machine that can uh, have blocks on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool. So on to the next thing. Oh. Tutorial. And the spikes. So we're on to the last few. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. Remote redstone. Triggers a redstone signal via a remote controller. How does it work? So requires a remote controller. Redstone. Block and remote controller. Right, so remote controller, redstone block and a remote controller. Activating the remote will switch the uh, block to send a continuous redstone signal until turned off again. Sneaking into it to activate the remote will open the menu to turn it into a different color channel. So, remote con 
Remote control. Oh, remote controlled redstone block. It's all one way. Down. So remote. So the remote controlled redstone. So it's three iron ingots, two redstone torches, smooth stone slab, and redstone controller. So make one of them. Oh no, I'm you know I mean create what? Well, and you need the con what was the controller? It's the redstone controller. Redstone controller, two redstone dust, redstone torch, two iron ingots, and an ender pearl. So if I place that down there. See, so yeah, I right click. Oh. It faces you. And obviously, and then you're going to need a repeater out. There we go. And then. So the channel is black, we can switch it to any other color, so that we'll switch it to cyan. Uh, yeah, damn it. That there, that there. Uh, I need cyan dye. Here we are. Yeah. That's pretty good. So you could you could use this to like uh unlock to like open a, a piston door. Uh remotely, that's pretty cool. And it makes a nice no <gasps> noise. Was there anything else you wanna do remotely? You don't need buttons or anything anymore? Next up is the elevator. Sends platforms up or, up or down the shaft of elevator rails. Uh, requires elevator rail, elevator control rail, and elevator platform. Elevators can be placed on elevator control rails when a control rail receives a redstone signal. On its right side, it will send the elevator up for as long as there are elevator rails above it. Similarly, on the left side, we'll send it down. So right goes up, left goes down. So let's take a look at this. Demo zero. Le. So you have the elevator rail, which is I ingus, Newstein slabs and rail. The control rail, which is gold elevator. So I would change this recipe so it was uh, this was like this, but instead of re regular rail, you used uh, powered rail. And then you have the uh, elevator used on the control rail. So it's just wooden planks and iron ingots. So control rail. Uh, uh, uh. So you have the control wheel there, and then you go up until you get to like the floor you want, and you add another control wheel. So I think I said left is up, right is down. Uh, so let's get a a butte. A button and the block will do any block, any old block. So, will that do? Yeah, okay, so I'll just put that there, that there. Redstone dust. 
That there, that there. Did I put it on the wrong side? Oh yeah, there we go. Right is up, left is down. Hold on, can you not stand on this? Oh yeah, you can. So... There we go. Now the other side. Buton, Buton. Oh, you're right. Click to get on it. Okay. So when it's moved, so you put that there, that there, that there. So when it's moving, you can't stand on it. Which is why you need to right click to get on it. Then the boop the button to go up. If you, oh, I got off before it stopped moving and I fell through. Hold on, come here. Why can't I stand on it now? It stopped. And it's not becoming solid again. That's, but yeah, if you shift right click it. And it broke. <laughs> I think you're ready. I think you also need a uh, a block at the top to stop that from happening. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Lily, stop it. Lily, come here. Now, come on. Come on, up, ups. Come here. No woofy please. Right, so. Next up. Tutorial. Now, uh, so I extend it to the breeder, bucket refiller, block dispenser, redstone saw, redstone drill, where am I? Yeah, the elevator's cool. Hopper dropper. A hopper with faster output. How does it work? Pulls an entire stack of items out of a chest or hopper above it and drops it below itself. Ah. Yeah, this is not good. So, if we go here, hop. Hopper dropper, four hoppers, three, four, five gold ingots. Now this, actually this could be good if um, if I misunderstood uh, what they meant, but if I didn't, then this is going to be very, very limited use case scenario. So I want chest. So chest there, that there. So I'm just going to put a chest here, and I'm just going to fill it up with, I don't know, let's say kelp. Put a bunch of kelp in there. And just control pick block. And can I? Yeah, I can stand on the cell. Put that there. Yeah, it's very limited use case scenario. So it basically just takes entire stacks and just drops them on the floor. Now, the name isn't even, like the name, firstly. Uh, hold on, let me show you something real quick. A dropper, if there's a chest where the mouth is, 
and you power the dropper, it will put that item into the chest and not just on the ground. So it's not, so the name's not even right, it's not a hopper dropper, it's just a stack dropper. It just drops items, it doesn't even work like a dropper, it doesn't work like a hopper, it's just pointless, well not pointless, like you could, actually what use case scenario would there be for this? Like again, if you know, put down in the comments below, but I cannot think of a use case scenario where you want to drop multiple stacks of items on the ground quickly, and and just like lie out and break the game. I don't know. This is dumb. Like you should just wait. It should just put the entire stacks into the chest. Like then it'll actually be useful. And just call it an upgraded hopper. Fan. Activated to switch between push and pull. Blows when coming up to five blocks in front of it uh, when activated by redstone signal. Creates wind current that blows items away. Uh, strength of the current is determined uh, by the uh, strength of the redstone signal. Blows uh, through non solid blocks. So, okay. So, fan. Uh, yeah, how do you craft it? Uh, four iron ingots, a trapdoor, a sword, a, two smooth slabs, and the redstone dust. So what I'm going to assume is that, yeah, point it that way, faces towards you. Put a lever on it. So right now it's pushing entities, you can also have them be pulled. So you could use this in mob farms to move your mobs quicker. Does it help? Does it let you defy gravity? Yeah, that's cool. They could probably do something cool with that. Does that make you fall? Oh yeah, it makes you fall real fast. So yeah, you could probably do some cool stuff with that, like mob farms and stuff. And like, wait, mm. I, I want to try this out real quick. So, if I have this go up here, I have a fan there. Now I want this fan to be powered, so let's get a redstone torch there. You know, then get an observer. And a bit of string. Place that there, that there. So when when I get there, oh, I want that to go there. Redstone dust. Well, actually, no. That there. That there. The sticky piston there, and that's not gonna. So that'll. Oh, I know the pist sticky piston doesn't even want to go there. It wants to go there. So let's get a repeater going into that piston. And get some glass. So 
So if I want that there, yeah, that there, and that there, and where's my dust? Here's my dust. Well, that there. Oh, you. <laughs> Lily! Get your dog. No. No, Lily. Bad Lily. Right, so that there. So. Bad Lily. Bad. And this here. Oi, bad Lily. How? Oh, yeah, I need a uh, repeater there. How is it powering itself? How? Hold on. Repeater there. Lock. Lock there. Repeater there. And then, uh, yeah. Can't really do that. Hmm. So just gonna have to bring this around to the side. Hold on. Could I just do that, that? That? Yep. So then when I go up here, ah. Yep. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, so just get turned off for a second. So you need a uh, a uh, pulse extender. Actually, what if I just do that? Yeah. Yeah, th this would work. You just need like a uh, Pulse extender there, but yeah, basically you would turn off the fan and the, pit, the block would extend below you and then you'd land on top of the block. It'd be like a quick, like, uh, kind of a, an eleva elevator kind of thing. I spent, I got sidetracked by that long enough. Let's, let's uh, get these last couple items. So, item magnet. Creates a magnetic field that pulls in items towards it. How does it work? When activated by a redstone signal, it will start pu pulling items towards itself. Radius of the magnet is determined by the strength of the redstone signal. So, mag. It's five copper, an iron, two smooth stone slabs, and a redstone dust. So, where's, where's the lever, the lever, there's a repeater, repeater, lever. Oh, well it would help if I put in the right side. Hold on, can I just put a lever there? No. Repeater, lever. Yeah, pulls item in, items in towards it. If I put a hopper below it, will it... Well, the hopper uh, suck them up. No. Is this not fully on the block, I think? 
Yeah, so you would need a few extra offers. But that'll work. So you could use this to gather items. It's not too, like so. It, I guess it could be useful to like get the items if you want to like, like, get the XP from that. But it's just like overly complicating it at that point. But there are times like that, that I would have liked like a vacuum hopper. So I guess uh, there are there are uses for it. Just not at all. Well, we just made a vac, a uh, a void hop, make caught, made a void hopper, just like you know, fuse the magnets and the hopper together, and then just like have it like have a hopper that sucks items towards it. And last uh, up, this is the transplanter. Places seeds from a top of minecart. Now they can be placed inside a minecart on rails, and they will cover a free block left and right to the rails. These blocks must be tilled and water soil placed one one. So yeah. So it was the uh what you call it the transplanter. So to make the transplanter it's four ingots, glass dirt, two diamonds and a chain. Right, the diamonds Shouldn't be in there. That, replace the diamonds with, with redstone dust. Uh, let's get some rail. Rail, powered rail. Mine. Minecart. Water. Who? Slap. So, oh yeah, let me. So let me just get this. So, water bucket there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, I made a mistake there, but I'll sort that out in a minute. So, let's get some wheels. Uh, so first off, let's just test this out. Get a lever. Get a minecart. Get the transplanter. Oh, there we go. And guess let's do cow carrots. Okay, why is that not working? Transplanter. Be placed one block below the block that the rails are on. Oh. That's why. Two. That there. 
there. And the lever. Oh, yeah, there we go, it worked that time. So yeah, you'd basically have this uh, going back and forth on the rail track, planting crops, but my main question with it is, does it also harvest? So it's all fine and good, it's like, uh, it, um, Planting the cross, but does it have them again? Or land on tick speed 1000? So, no, it does not harvest them. So, yeah, it kind of makes this a bit of a mid item. Like, yeah, it's nice having it to plant crops, but if it doesn't also harvest them, then what's really the point? And it's still balanced to. It's kind of, and it's, well, it, I say it's underpowered that it used in diamonds, like, right, first, make it use redstone, replace diamonds with redstone in this crafting recipe. Secondly, make it harvest uh, crops. And uh, thirdly, have it to uh, be upgradable with the Fortune Enchanted book. And, uh, and maybe also extend its reach to four blocks in, in both directions. Maybe that's not really... Super important, but that would also be nice. But the other two are, uh, I would say, uh, they should definitely add that. But yeah, add those. But yeah, all, all in all, not, not bad add on. Pretty cool. Got some cool items, useful items. So yeah, hope you guys all did enjoy this video. Hope to see you guys in the next video. And bye bye, Jesus Christ.